Good morning and welcome to the May 31st broadcast of Peak View Church of God's Worship. And uh, I'm Pastor Rex. I'm here to uh, give a message that the Lord has laid on my heart uh, for this morning. Uh, before we get into the message, I have a very quick uh, little bit of an announcement. I hope you were able to watch the introduction that I recorded a bit earlier. Uh, that introduction has has a bit more detail, uh, but uh, effective next Sunday, June the 7th, we do plan to be able to return to our worship facility at 401 West Bijou Street, and we do plan to be able to have our worship service. Now, our Bible studies are being held uh, by pre-recording at this time. Uh, those are being broadcast on Thursday evenings at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. That's 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time and uh, 7.30 p.m. Central Time, 6.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and then, of course, uh, 5.30 p.m. on the West Coast. Uh, but just wanted to mention that our Bible studies uh, will not be, they will continue to be, uh, let me put it that way, they will continue to be broadcast on Thursday evenings uh, at that time uh, until further notice. And we're looking to be able to go back to having our Bible studies on Sunday mornings. Uh, but uh, just wanted to mention this to you. Also, uh, when we return to the building, uh, which we do anticipate to be next Sunday, June the 7th, uh, there will be some restrictions in place. And uh, I have read over the submitted proposal uh, that was unanimously approved by our El Paso County County Commissioners. Uh, and uh, this past Wednesday, we do not have an official approval from the governor on that yet. I will keep you updated and informed. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you would go back, if you haven't already, and listen to the introduction that I gave uh, at the beginning of worship time today at the 1030 hour. You can find that at our Facebook page, uh, Peak View Church of God, and just look us up, Peak View Church of God, Colorado Springs. Also, you will be able to find that and can find that at our YouTube channel, which is also searching Peak View Church of God, Colorado Springs. Uh, just wanted to make you aware of this, and uh, we do plan to also have it posted uh, later uh, this week at our uh website, which is peakviewcog.wix site. That's peakviewcog.wixsite.com forward slash peakviewcog. And of course, Peakview is P-E-A-K-V-I-E-W. So uh, just wanted to bring that to your attention. There are going to be some restrictions in place for a while, uh, but we're going to be able to worship together and uh, just wanted to make you aware of that. Now, I do want to bring a message to you this morning. And uh, what a great ministry that we just heard. Uh, and uh, I did also put a... Uh, into our service at the beginning, just after the introduction, a uh, uh, a video uh, from someone obviously not in our church, but uh, just felt very impressed to share uh, that particular video. And then, of course, the worship choruses and the special uh, that we've got scheduled by uh, Stephanie Bucksath, my youngest, youngest daughter. And uh, so, and then, of course, the message right now. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being with us. We do plan to broadcast live, if at all possible, next Sunday uh, for our worship service that begins at 10.30 uh, a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Now, uh, if we are not able to get it to live broadcast, we will record and we will be putting it on our site and uh, putting it on through our YouTube channel and through our Facebook uh, as soon thereafter as 
possible. Uh, but we invite you, uh, we will be getting the live feed uh, live either next week or within the next few weeks. We'll keep you updated on that as well. If you continue to follow our Facebook channel uh, and follow our YouTube channel. This morning I want to bring to you uh, in this message from Genesis chapter 2 and we're going to be uh, reading other portions of Scripture. Uh, but I want to begin in Genesis chapter 2. So if you have your Bibles with you, you may want to turn with me there. Genesis chapter 2, I'm going to read the first seven verses. It is says... Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. And God blessed the seventh day. These are the generations Let me begin that scripture again. I read uh, the second verse twice. Genesis chapter 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul." Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word, and I thank you for the breath of heaven. I thank you, dear God, that it is your eternal breath that brings us life, brings us to be more than just the common creation, but created us so that we were in your image, made to be able to make choices, and give us the hope of eternal life, for we will live eternally one way or another. And I thank you, dear God, that not only have you given us the possibility to live into eternity, but you have given to us, even in our sin, the ability to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and to be able to live eternally with you in what is true eternal life. God, I... Pray that the breath of heaven would flow through each one of us today and help us to be able to live our lives every day understanding how wonderful you are, how great you are, and how special it is to be able to live in your kingdom. I praise you for this and I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to speak to you today on the topic about the breath of heaven. Now today... May the 31st, 2020, is Pentecost Sunday. And I want to bring to you this message from Genesis chapter 2. And I want to begin with this idea that God has given us the breath of life. And in verse 7 that I just read to you in Genesis chapter 2, it says, And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And I want to talk to you about who is the breath of life, who God really is, and what his plan for you and I are in this day and time. Well, first of all, we find God in the beginning. And at the end, we find him all throughout in between from Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to Revelation chapter 22 verse 21. We find the God of the universe, the universal God, the one true living God. And every moment of our life involves God. He is the breath of life. In Luke, or excuse me, in Genesis chapter 
1, we hear God for the first time in His Word. And it says, In the beginning, God, or Elohim, created the heaven and the earth. Now, if you look at this word, we hear God in the very first verse of the Bible. And God, the word for God in this very first verse is Elohim. And Elohim is the word which is actually plural for God. In the beginning, God, plural, the one true God, created he was in the beginning before all of this occurred. He has been eternal past, and we don't understand that, but we know that He is. And His power is amazing. He, I talked about this within the past couple of weeks in the message about the greatness of God and the eternalness of God. He is God above all. He is the God of gods. He is the one over all. In fact, in Psalm number 19 and verse 1, we hear about the glory of God. We hear about the wonder of God. And he says in Psalm number 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims His handiwork. Now, in Isaiah chapter 40, we also want to take a look very quickly. In Isaiah chapter 40, verses 10 through 13, and then verses 18, and then 21 through 22, it says, Behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand, and His arm shall rule for Him. Behold, His reward is with Him, and His work before Him. He shall feed His flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with His arm, and carry them in His bosom, and gently lead those that are with young. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow, the hollow of his hand, and metered out heaven with a span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in balance. What an incredible God. In other words, there is nothing on this planet but what he is far beyond that. Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord, or being His counsel, hath taught Him? Well, no one has. He is the wise one. He is the omnipotent one. He is the Almighty One. And then in verse 18 it says, So then, to whom will ye liken God? Or what likeness will you compare unto Him? Have you not known? Verse 21. Have you not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is He that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. We want to talk about this God who is beyond understanding beyond anything we can comprehend in Isaiah chapter 40 there. And he is in the beginning, Elohim, God, the God. In Psalm 19 and 1 that I mentioned to you a moment ago, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. In Psalm number 8, verses 1 through 4, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is Thy name in all the earth! Who has set Thy glory above the heavens? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hath Thou ordained strength because of Thine enemies, that Thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heavens... The work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? I want to pause here just a moment. I want to talk about this God. Today was a very exciting day. Uh, yesterday was a very exciting day. Today, this morning, uh, as the new uh, space flight uh, the Dragon uh, was launched into space on top of the Falcon yesterday. And uh, what an amazing launch. It was wonderful. Um, I heard a story that uh, uh, my grandson, Jericho, uh, was actually in the back seat of the car. They have uh, uh, an automobile that has a, a television screen now. And uh, he had just... Uh, uh, through uh, some exciting uh, news for his parents, especially, uh, had been able to um, uh, earn uh, a special uh, 
model, a Lego model of uh, of a space station, of, of uh, the uh, the space station Lego set that uh, uh, the uh, the space shuttle Lego uh, can attach to. Well, today, yesterday, um, was a fantastic launch of uh, uh, Americans finally being able to go back into space after the space uh, program had been shut down uh, by a prior administration. And uh, wow, what a wonderful thing to be able to see that. Now, as they are launching into orbit as they are launching into the heavens. They were talking about how that we plan to be able through other missions and other uh, space vehicles. Uh, this is the first one to get us back in space uh, that we're looking to be able to go uh, and land on the moon within the next four years uh, again. And then uh, uh, once we make sure that everything is in place and, and works correctly to be able to do a moon landing, then they're looking at a three-year mission to Mars. And, uh, but as I thought about that, and I thought about the wonders, I have been somebody who's followed the space program from my youngest days. I remember my mom and dad allowing me to stay up and watch uh, the moon landing uh, back in uh, uh, July of, of uh, uh, for the Apollo 11 launch. And uh, I remember them letting me stay up and, and watch that. Uh, and uh, what a great time. And uh, all my life I've been uh, looking at this. But then when you think about the, the magnitude of us thinking, just beginning to think about going to Mars, which is a three-year round trip, depending on how long we stay there, uh, and you think about that's just one planet in our solar system. And that we cannot even fathom how vast it will be when we start reaching out further. Now, I believe Jesus is coming. He's coming very soon. I don't know uh, how far into the space program we're going to get. But I can tell you this. When you think about those things and the, the millions of miles between planets and you start thinking about how we're going to traverse them or we're planning to traverse them, then you think about the magnitude of Elohim. The God of the universe, the God who created it all, the God that in the beginning created the heavens and the earth. All that we know, all that we don't know, all that we can't fathom, God created it. And this is the God who takes, takes notice of you and I. Now think about this, this last verse that I just read to you. Psalm number 8, verse 4. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? And now comes the idea of the breath of life. You see, God, in all of creation, all of those six days of creation, He created magnificent things. Created a, a, a planet with land and water and an atmosphere and, and put uh, plants on the earth and, and filled the seas and the land with, with various uh, beings, animals and fish. And then came His crowning achievement. He said, let us make man in our image. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost created man in his own image and created man and woman. Now, we're not going to go into too much of the depth of the fall of man, but in that moment, in Genesis chapter 2 that I read to you earlier, God created a being, you and I created mankind so that we could live and breathe and move. And the Bible distinctively says in Genesis chapter 2 that I read to you that man became, when God breathed into him the breath of life, man became a living soul. I did a little research on this, and you'll find that as we get to Genesis chapter 2, this is the first time in Genesis chapter 2 that we hear the, the term Yahweh. We hear the term Lord God, Yahweh Elohim. 
And as I was researching this, I, I thought it very interesting. I found several that refer to God as the breath of life. And if you think about it, if you take a moment and you open your mouth and you breathe in and you breathe out, the sounds that are created appear to say Yahweh. His very name comes from us breathing in and breathing out. In fact, the word Yahweh, the name Yahweh, was so important to the Jews that they wouldn't even spell it out. We're not exactly sure of the full spelling of the term Yahweh because they would only give the consonants and not the vowels of the word. And so when they wrote Yahweh, they would write Y-H-W-H. And when you think about that, Yahweh, Yahweh, His breath is a part of every breath we take. His name is a part of every breath you and I take. Genesis chapter 2, verse 4 through 7 that I've already read to you. I'm not going to go through this again, but it says that He breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. Yahweh. Yahweh Elohim breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. In Job number 33, chapter 33 and verse 4, the Spirit of God hath made me and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. Every breath I take is a breath to the honor and the glory of Almighty God. In Acts chapter 17, it, we find Paul standing in the midst of Mars Hill and he says, You men of Athens... I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. Now he had just begun to speak here on top of Mars Hill because uh, he, he had gone into Athens and he had been looking around at all of their gods, all of their statues, all of their graven images, and all of the great monuments that they had created to their, their pagan gods. So in verse 22, he begins his message. You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord, Yahweh, of heaven, and earth dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. And he hath made one blood of all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and had determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own, as your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. I want to take a moment. I want to talk about that a minute. He gives us all breath. He gives us all life. He gives us all things. And when you think about this, here we are in the midst of this COVID epidemic, this coronavirus, this COVID-19 epidemic. And it has attacked our immune systems, it has attacked the ability to breathe, people being put on respirators. We are being asked to wear masks when going out in public. We are being asked to be considerate of our fellow man and to wear those masks so that we don't spread a virus that we may not be aware of actually having. 
Now, I, there are a lot of big people who have uh, talked about whether it's, it's effective or not. I've done a lot of research on these things, and, and I happen to know that when we are able to join back in our worship services, and I've talked to a few of you about this over the last few days, but we are going to be requested to have everyone wear a mask. Now, why? Because breath is so critical. It's so important. It is the oxygen that we take in. It is the carbon dioxide that we breathe out that allows the planet to continue to operate as God designed it. That carbon dioxide, it is there for the plants and they take in carbon dioxide and they give off oxygen. This is incredibly important. And when we take in that oxygen, the things that are in that oxygen, and there can be droplets of all kinds of things, they go into our bodies and they get into our bloodstream through the uh, the lungs and the heart interaction. And, and I don't have time to describe it all, but this amazing body God has given to us, he, He's given us the breath of life, the ability to continue to breathe. And Paul is preaching about this to the men of Athens and saying, this is the God who has given us the ability to breathe. He's given us life. He's the one I'm declaring to you. Every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field God gave to interact with man and be able to cause this breath. Now, it is important for us to understand the reasoning behind some of this. It's not extremely effective in some conditions, in some situations, but it does help some. And Paul is telling the people on Mars Hill, and I'm telling you today, this is the God of the universe who gave us this breath. And not only did He give us this breath of life as all other living things have, but He gave us a special breath. A breath that created in us a living soul. So that when this body dies... We do not need to worry about what is going to happen. God's already got that mapped out. We are a living soul. Our soul will live into eternity. And the amazing thing is that through the blood of Jesus Christ, through His resurrection by the power of the Holy Ghost, through His ascension into heaven, through all of those things, you and I have been given the amazing ability to live forever in a resurrected body that our soul will inhabit. Our soul, mind, and body will be intact through eternity. Why? Because of the breath of life given to us by an almighty God who's got this in His hands. And not only has He given us the ability to live, being Elohim God created us, but being Yahweh God has given us the breath of life to be able to speak His name even with every breath that we breathe in and that we exhale. Wow! What an amazing God! And this same God is the one who mapped out the beauty of the Pentecostal experience. Now what is that? Well, we hear of the power of the Holy Ghost. And we are Pentecostal uh, in this church. We believe in the power of Pentecost that is still active today. That God is still moving. That there are still the gifts of the Spirit in operation. And today as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate this breath that goes not only beyond being created as all other creatures were by Elohim God, and not only do we have the eternal soul that is put inside of us by Yahweh Elohim, but we have the power of the Holy Ghost living with and through us as the breath of the Spirit. The Holy God of Heaven living through us in a, in a dynamic way that only God can do. 
It gives us the ability to live in a breath of life that gives us the opportunity to pray for the sick, that gives us the opportunity to, to speak with God in a language that only He knows sometimes. And, and sometimes it's given through a, a special language and interpretation. There are many gifts of the Spirit that God has, and, and perhaps in another sermon to come, I will deal with those gifts of the Spirit. But in John chapter 20, Jesus found this to be so important. John chapter 20, beginning with verse 19, reading through verse 22, it says, the same day, the first day of the week, by the way, the day of the resurrection, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in their midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands in his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. He breathed on them in his resurrected form. He breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And in Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and then verse 8, it says, the former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, and Luke is writing here, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which He was taken up after that He through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom He had chosen, to whom also He showed Himself alive after His passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, You have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Verse 8, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And Jesus is caught into heaven and, and the angels standing near them say, Ye men of Galilee, why are you standing staring into heaven? This same Jesus shall return as He has told you. Go in Jerusalem and tarry. And they did. And in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. The winds of heaven, the breath of life came upon them and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. As we look at this today, we recognize that not only are we created in the way that all other uh, animals that breathe are created, but we have that eternal soul. And now we have been given as the church of the living God that special anointed breath from heaven, a rushing mighty wind that comes upon us the Holy Spirit, the winds of God. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. And I want to talk to you about this quickening Spirit because not only do we have an amazing ability through God, through the baptism of the Holy Ghost, to be able to work in ways that we are called to work. And not only are we able to uh, see the gifts of the Spirit in operation, but we have something even greater in our lives going on as a result of that. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, it says, For Christ also once hath suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that He might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened in the Spirit. I want to talk to you about the breath of life that quickens us. 
In the Spirit, we are quickened. We are enabled. We are given life. We are animated, if you will. We are a new creation. Old things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are Spirit and they are life. In order to live through the power of God, we need to be quickened, stirred up. We need the Holy Ghost to be alive and effective in our lives. In Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 15, it says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have the Spirit of have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quit in your mortal bodies by the Spirit that dwelleth in you. It is that same Spirit. We have to understand the Spirit is working in us every day of our lives and quickening us to be the effective ministers of the Gospel. Not only those that are called to preach as I am, but those called into every ministry, every aspect of life that God has called you into. He is giving us the ability to live each and every day in a powerful manifestation of of God through the quickening of the Holy Spirit. It says, Therefore we are not debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby require Abba, Father... Our very dear Father. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that I read to you last week when I talked about the coming of Jesus Christ, the Scriptures before that Scripture say this in verses 39 through 45, All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in brilliance, in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption and it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening Spirit, And this is the scripture that is immediately followed by him saying, Now I'm going to show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trump shall sound. The dead in Christ shall be raised first. We which are alive and remain will be caught up together to meet with the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And it concludes in that chapter, Oh, grave! Or, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Verse 55 of that same chapter. I am here to tell you today, my friend. God wants you today to be ready to know that at a moment's notice, He can put you to work. He can empower you. He can minister through you. You think you're stuck at home, but God will bring people to you through, through various means. And as we start getting out a little bit more and we start being able to go back into restaurants and, and we are able to go back into church with some restrictions as far as the building and, and other things, when all of these things start happening and, and even now in your homes, you are contacting people. People are contacting you. God is giving you the ability to be a quickened spirit, a person that is quickened with power to be able to speak the word of the living God. Talk of Him. Show a life that is pleasing to God. Be a Christian. That means being Christ-like. 
And live a life that God can work through. Let the breath of life, the quickening breath of God, move in you in all things. Let God use you in special ways. Ways that only He can. I've only talked about two of the names of God in this message. Elohim and Yahweh. We may be dealing with some more of those in the weeks to come. But I want you to understand that it is God's important desire that you and I live for Him and that we are not looking at the world as our, as our sustainer. It is God who is our sustainer. He is the one that takes us and empowers us. Let this breath of heaven flow through you today. Every breath we breathe is for His glory. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior today, you can know Him. If you do know Him as your personal Savior, then give yourself to exactly to what He can do with and through you. Let God be the breath of life that sustains every moment of your day. And be ready when Jesus comes. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would take this word, dear God, and you would stir us. Stir us in a way that will challenge us to live our lives each and every moment so that you are pleased with what we do, so that others are affected in a positive Christian way, that they can come to know you. God, help us to be a witness for you, I pray in Jesus' name. And I pray, dear God, that your Holy Ghost would fill us and empower us and move through us in every aspect of our lives so that every moment we can be an honor to you. I pray, dear God, that you would touch these that may not know you, draw them to you as they confess their sin before you. I pray that you would forgive them as you promised in your word. And God, as they commit their life to you, I pray, dear God, that you would use them and show them. And God, bring us alongside them that we might be able to disciple them by your word and, and by our example. And I pray, dear God, that as they give themselves completely into your hands, God, let your spirit overshadow them and protect them and empower them to do the work you're calling them to do. God, I pray each one of us would be drawn and live through the spirit of life, the breath of heaven that comes directly from your throne. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Thank you so much today. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you again in service. Just a couple of quick things. I know that we are going to be giving a more detailed explanation. But when we do meet again, uh, we're going to have to come in uh, and we're going to have to go straight to the pews that are marked and designated. Uh, we are going to have to be dismissed by families. We're not going to be able to uh, have our normal gatherings before or after service. Um, there are some other things that are going to be required. But I want you to know, we are looking forward to the day when God brings us through this completely and we're able to go back to being uh, together again. I believe God's going to bring us to that. We just have to put it in His hands. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you in person or I look forward to seeing you through this ministry as it continues online. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.